Hi, it's Rob here and I have three, what I believe to be a relatively simple to implement things you can do to raise entrepreneurial uh, and money and business savvy, self-sufficient, inspired kids. Uh, so here they are. So the first thing is rather than giving them money, uh, you know, via inheritance, um, could you get them involved in business and enterprise early? So I think a lot of parents have a vision that, you know, giving their kids, uh, you know, plenty of money for deposits for houses or, you know, a big lump when they pass away is a great gift to them. The thing is, money without the knowledge, uh, the experience and the responsibility of knowing how to manage and master it can be a curse as well as a gift. So I believe the greatest gift that you can do to raise money and enterprise savvy, self-sufficient kids is to teach them about managing and mastering money and to teach them about business and enterprise and hard work and smart work and leverage. Uh, uh, and so whilst there's a lot of people that have amazing intentions for their children, just like the lottery winners who win a lot of money and then end up squandering it and two years later, statistically, most of them actually are in a worse financial position. So you don't want to be passing on a curse. So um, my business partner, Mark, um, had like a, a sort of an, a, an unconscious or, or at least a, a mentor who wasn't a, you know, a paid or a specific mentor. It was just someone he got to hang out with a lot because it was his friend's dad. And um, when Mark's friend turned 18, his friend's dad put a deposit in to buy quite a large house. But this house wasn't a gift. This mortgage wasn't going to be paid by his dad. The deal was he put the mortgage, the deposit in for the house. The son would be responsible for paying the mortgage the deposit was a loan, not a gift. But anything over and above the mortgage, the son got to keep uh, and the son got any growth in the property. So the son took over the management of the property, lived in it and rented it out to a load of his schoolmates. Uh, and I thought that this was an, a bit of inspired genius from his dad because you're going to learn a lot about business and life and property and rentals and dealing with friends and business and money if you live in, say, a four-bedroom house and you rent out the living room uh, and, and, you know, and three or four other rooms. Um, and so you can imagine all the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows that uh, this young 18-year-old learned about business, money, dealing with friends, etc., uh, and over time, he got good at it because, you know, he was forced to sink or swim because he was inspired and motivated because he could end up owning a house that's worth hundreds of thousands of pounds in the future. Uh, and his dad was like, it's your problem. Uh, and I've gifted you the deposit and you get to live in this house uh, as long as the mortgage is covered by you, but you keep anything else. So he rented out all the rooms. Uh, and, you know, within, uh, I guess, a couple of years, he bought a, a brand new car and all of his mates at school and then you and he were like, whoa, you're raking it in. Uh, and that house has probably more than doubled twice in value because this was probably, what is it, my age, 39 years, this was over 20 years ago. So he probably has 400 grand's worth of equity. Um, and yeah, now I think owns the house outright. Some of you are saying it's a bit echoey. It's only because I'm in uh, a boardroom in my house, which is an echoey room. Um, yeah, it's, it's not our new podcast equipment. So that was a great thing I thought he did for his, his, his son. Uh, and a way to pass money on, but to get him to get the lessons and the responsibility and to make money on the money. So the second thing, which are, these are all things I've learned from other people, by the way, which I think are, uh, are really inspired. So the second thing uh, is to... Pocket money, I believe, is a bit like handing out gifts and doesn't really come with lessons. So giving people pocket money, giving your kids pocket money, um, do chores, earn pocket money. Well, you should, you should do chores anyway. You should be part of the household and, you know, help uh, run a house um, without getting paid. But um, if you challenge your children to read a book, maybe a fictional book with good life lessons or a non-fiction book on personal development, on business, on, you know, just being successful. 
uh, and then you pay them for a report on that book and you could pay them handsomely. I know someone who taught me about this. He'd pay his son uh, 50 pounds for every fiction or non-fiction book that had good life lessons in it, but he needed a report, you know, so he needed the, the child to write what I learned from the book and what other people could learn from this book. And then he paid him 50 pounds. And, and this child is, is reading a book a week and writing a report a week and earning, what, 200 odd pounds a month. Uh, and, uh, you know, that is, I think, a really great thing to do. Uh, and so you take the pocket money away for the things that they should be doing anyway. Now, look, you can give them money for um, washing cars and going and knocking on doors with guidance if they're young, of course, uh, and, and asking to sell stuff on eBay or you know, help them do the gardening. I think those things are really great business and life lessons to get them out of their comfort zone to learn about value and sales and enterprise. Um, but, you know, like you get you pay your kids to learn to learn how to get paid. And, and I think that's um, a, a great gift. The third thing then is I think many of us want to raise inspired, educated, financially savvy kids who can maybe run their own business and create value and be creative. Uh, Bobby, do you want to go on the camera? My son's trying to get in the door. Um, but sometimes the people that our children resist the most are, are us, our parents, because there's that wall in the way because we're telling them what to do. So could you find an uncle, a relative, a friend of yours who's got a successful business or is a really positive person who's got, got good life skills uh, and maybe have them as a godparent or, or get them involved once a week or once a month, take the children out around their business and sort of become their unofficial mentor. Um, because if it's someone else and not you and someone else they look up to, then your, um, your kids are probably going to be inspired by them, hey Bobby? <laughs> um, and, and so I tried to pick somewhere quiet. <laughs> so, you know, I remember that um, my dad had a, a godfather to my um, sister, who was like a really successful jockey and knew a lot about business and had a lot of contacts. So if you take you out of the equation, you take the resistance out of the equation. And I know when I became a parent for the first time seven years ago, I thought one of the greatest gifts I could bring to my children is to give them financial education, you know, to, to teach them about how the world works and business and enterprise and money and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, sometimes it's hard because they're resisting you because you are their parent. So find someone else. And you don't tell them that they're doing this, but over time, they're really inspired by them. They want to be like them. They're like a kind of little hero to them. Um, so just a quick reminder then, the three greatest things I think I've learned that you can pass on to your kids to build financially and business and enterprise and value creating savvy children from an early age is one, when you can get them involved in an enterprise, like buying them a house and putting the deposit in, but they owe you the deposit, they have to rent out all the rooms and then they get to keep the rest. Uh, and of course that, that's for only sort of 18 year olds and, and up. Uh, two is to, rather than pay them pocket money for chores, pay them for work, you know, like gardening and car washing, etc. that they do. And especially get them reading life lesson books, fiction or non-fiction, writing a report and then you pay them per book. Uh, and then third thing is rather than you imposing your lessons on them and they'll resist you, get a family member or a friend to become like a you know, an unofficial mentor to them because they'll listen to them, look up to them. And it takes a lot of pressure off of you. And therefore, you know, you have the best intention, but sometimes they actually want to do what you want them to do the least and you create resistance, which you don't intend to do. So like Bobby has a golf coach and I'm trying to get, you know, like um, his granddad and other people to take him from time to time. My wife took him to a first competition where she was the caddy because at times, just naturally, because we spend all day every day together, that he can resist me because I'm his dad. All right, so thanks for tuning in. I hope those three tips were really useful to you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Please share them with any parent that you know um, or any parent that you know wants to raise enterprising entrepreneurial kids but, you know, is maybe struggling a bit um, because I think that these are gifts that need to be passed on. Um, all right, so yeah, um, an echo fun would cure the echo in the room, but except I'm doing it on a live feed on the video. But anyway, I think you get the picture. So thanks for tuning in, and remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.